They fly through the oceans, such mysterious creatures. Now, 20 years of research is revealing more of what dolphins are like. And scientists are answering some amazing questions, like, can we communicate with dolphins? And why would a dolphin watch television? In South America, why have dolphins formed a partnership with a fisherman? Why do they seem to have a friendly willingness to cooperate with humans? Join us for a deeper look into the nature of the dolphin. Probably no other sea animal has captured our affection and attention like the dolphin. Its intelligence and athleticism has fascinated observers for years. On this edition of Explore the Wildlife Kingdom, we're going to take an up-close look at this wonderful creature and learn just how smart and social the dolphin really is. So join us as we travel with the Tribes of the Sea. Dolphins, what magical beings, so different, yet so familiar. Until recently, they've carried the secrets of their lives deep in their water world, a world alien to us. This is a journey to rediscover the dolphin, from ancient myth to science, and to explore what we have in common. They're unique individuals, and at least 34 species of dolphins exist around the world. Now we're discovering unexpected connections between people and dolphins. Across wild frontiers, scientific research now shows us dolphins as we've never known them. For most of us, our first experience of dolphins is from places like the Mirage Hotel in Las Vegas. Here, show dolphins do double duty, teaching while they perform. School children get a rare chance to see for themselves what they share with dolphins, like a warm body temperature and a need to breathe air. Like us, dolphins give live birth to their young, just as Duchess here is about to have her own baby. An early ultrasound checkup shows her baby already practicing to swim. After 12 months of pregnancy, Duchess could give birth at any time. The baby announces its arrival, flukes first. After giving birth, Duchess quickly pushes her baby to the surface for his first breath. The new baby is aptly named Squirt and is buoyant like a cork to help him stay close to the surface. He'll stay at mom's side where the pressure wave she creates practically gives him a free ride. An ocean away in Hawaii, there's a chance to move one step closer to dolphins up close and personal. All right, come down here, trainers. All right. Now, put your ear towards him and listen for dolphin sounds. Listen, listen. Whoa! <laughs> I must excuse you. Michelle, you 
you guys ask? Lona, was that you? Lona, ask was that you? Was it? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Here at the Waikoloa Hotel in Hawaii, Lono seems to be particularly drawn to children. And the feeling is definitely mutual. What do you mean, dude? Let me roll him over. Oh, geez. Belly rub. What is this? It's his belly button. Touch the belly button. It's an innie. You guys are born alive. You have a belly button. So does Lona. Now, who here is ticklish? On the count of three, we're going to tickle Lona. Watch out. Here comes some water. Ready? One, two, three, tickle. Oh, oh, oh. No more tickling! No more tickling! Okay. On the count of three. One, two, three. Salute! In places like this, we began to fall in love with dolphins. But a picture of what they're like at sea is just emerging. Off the coast of Central America, in Honduras, is the Roatan Marine Institute where people can have even closer contact with dolphins. Here, a group of bottlenose dolphins live in a large natural setting under the watchful eye of staff and head trainer, Eldon Bolton. He's especially attentive to Enzo, only six months old and a rambunctious baby. For up to five years, Enzo will learn about being a dolphin at his mother's side. But for right now, he just wants to play. Every day, offshore from the Institute, a few of the dolphins follow the boat into the open waters of the reef, where they're completely free to explore. Here, divers have the unique opportunity to observe natural behavior. To live as a dolphin is to move through water that is 800 times thicker than air and where streamlining is mandatory. Underwater, sound travels four times faster than in air and has become the dolphin's primary sense. They're masters of improvisation. Using his echolocation, Esteban now turns his attention to foraging, exploring, or playing. With a dolphin, it's hard to tell which is which. We know we share intelligence. It's seen in the dolphin's wide range of behavior and in their network of complex relationships. But everything they do is interrupted by a need to breathe. At least once every 15 minutes, a bottlenose dolphin has to surface. Theirs is a vertical existence. Esteban's echolocated something in the sand and is corkscrewing his way to it. But getting fish isn't easy, even for a dolphin in a school of thousands of fish. They'll get a meal back at home, but such a banquet is hard to resist. Fish travel in schools for protection, and singling one out is something dolphins learn to do, one fish at a time.
These are close encounters with domesticated dolphins. Yet there is a place where every day people come to meet dolphins in the wild. In the warm waters off Western Australia, wild dolphins actually seek out the company of people. It began in the 60s when a woman named Alice threw a fish to a wild dolphin she named Charlie. Within a few weeks, Charlie was bringing his friends to Monkey Mia. Today, Charlie's descendants still choose to come every day to check out the growing number of tourists. And it's hard to tell who is more curious about whom. Once again, folks, welcome to Monkey Mia. We're very shortly, we're going to do a feed. Please remember at all times that they are wild animals. Just step out, hold the fish by the tail, not the dolphin, and place it right down into the mouth. Just hold that by the tail, sweetie. Pop it into the mouth. $200 fine. It's against the law in most places to feed wild dolphins. So here, the government uses park rangers to control it. The dolphins are given only a small amount of what they need, and even that, they often refuse. They seem to come here for more than just the fish. Here, one intelligent species comes to meet another, generation after generation. Now, you haven't finished your job because you've now got to take that bucket and swill it out. Okay. That tells the dolphin there's no more fishing. You did an excellent job. Thanks for your cooperation, folks. After their friendly outing, some of the dolphins move offshore, where a few of them have developed a surprising technique to catch fish. Researchers have discovered a foraging behavior that may put the dolphins of Shark Bay in a different category altogether. Off the coast, in an area of deeper water, where fewer dolphins go, researchers Janet Mann and Vincent Janet often see dolphins first documented by colleague Rachel Smolker. These dolphins were first described by a fisherman as severely deformed, with large growths on their faces. Scientists soon learned that growth was actually a sponge for some reason, the dolphins were carrying the sponges. But why? What we think that they're doing with the sponge, and we've had a couple of good observations of it, is uh, going along the bottom with the sponge and either protecting themselves from the, from the abrasions in the sand and using the sponge to perhaps scare up fish that then they chase and catch. In other places, we know that dolphins catch food with their faces in the sand. But here in Shark Bay, they may have turned a sponge into a tool. What's so surprising about this behavior is that it's the only case of suspected tool use among wild whales and dolphins, and it only occurs among these five females in Shark Bay. So, these dolphins may use tools, and more importantly, teach each other how to use these tools just as we do. They're intelligent, tool-using mammals. Dolphins have been designed to live in some unlikely places. Among the most unlikely waters to find dolphins are the tributaries of the world's most powerful river, the Amazon. Here lives a dolphin almost 2,000 miles from the sea, in waters stained like tea from the leaves of the forest, which is flooded six months of the year. The Amazon River dolphin, or boto, literally flies through the flooded forest. In the river's murky waters, vision is useless, but the boto has a remarkable design. 
a bulge the size of a grapefruit on its forehead to accommodate a powerful ability to echolocate and a neck flexible enough to look through a labyrinth of trees to catch prey. In this golden river, people and dolphins share the waters, but rarely do their real lives intersect. But in southern Brazil, a human culture and a dolphin culture have met. In the coastal town of Laguna, an amazing partnership has formed. Almost every day, dozens of fishermen line up to wait for the dolphins. They stand in water so murky that only the dolphins, with their echolocation, know if fish are there. The men wait for a signal as the dolphins herd fish to them. Only when the dolphin signals and rolls away in safety do they throw their nets. The dolphins wait for the fish who try to escape the nets, only to be caught easily in their jaws. In this cooperative fishery, each fisherman catches more than 40 pounds of fish to sell in the local markets. About 100 families depend on the fishery to earn a living. And it's been happening here since 1847. So local fishermen have used this fishing technique for 150 years. Just as generations of fishermen have passed this tradition on to their children, so have the dolphins who live here in a unique culture of cooperation. One of the amazing things about being close enough to look at a dolphin is that they look back. They watch us as much as we watch them. Maybe it's the way they look you straight in the eye or their permanent smile, but they do seem to want to play and communicate with us. We don't know if dolphins have a language of their own, and yet they seem to communicate. Could we create a common language we both understand? One of the best places to find answers to these questions is the Kualo Basin Marine Mammal Laboratory in Honolulu, where the dolphins have learned a simple sign language. Dr. Adam Pack works here with Dr. Lou Herman, exploring dolphin intelligence and communication. This lab is like a school with many teachers for each dolphin. Akea Kamai already has a vocabulary of over 60 words and can understand more than 2,000 sentences. Okay, Adam, we're going to start with some two-word sentences. Adam wears blinders to avoid giving cues through eye contact. The first sentence is, hoop through, swim through the hoop. Ready? Each gesture is a separate word. She puts the sign for hoop and the sign for through together and knows what it means. This was an easy one, but they're just getting started. Okay, Adam, the next sentence is surfboard, person, fetch. Ready. Surfboard, person, fetch means take the person to the surfboard. Ake Akamai has to figure out what the sentence means by the order of the words. This is not a trick she's memorized. She understands one of the building blocks of language, word order. Okay, Adam, we're going to try the same three words in a different order and see if a K can take the surfboard to the person this time. The sentence now will be person, surfboard, fetch. Ready? Person, surfboard, fetch. 
Same three words, different order, completely different meaning. This is the same difference as the dog bit the cat or the cat bit the dog. Very nice, yes! Can I have that frisbee? Thank you. Thank you. Then they tried something completely new. Could Ake Akamai report on which objects were or were not in the pool? Okay, Adam. We'll need a frisbee, a basket, and a person to be placed into the water. Here, Adam shows the dolphin each object as it is placed in the pool. Show the basket. In the reporting procedure, we're not creating new gestures for the words. They're the same gestures, the gesture for person, the gesture for basket, except now we're asking about the presence or absence of those objects. For her to answer, she has a white paddle for yes and a black paddle for no. Okay, Adam, is there a basket? Ready? Easy answer. Ake Akamai goes to the white paddle for yes. Yes, yeah, that's correct. She says yes. Is there a pipe? Ready. Ake Akamai knows what a pipe is, and it's not in the pool. That's correct. There is no pipe. Now Ake Akamai has to respond to a question that has no simple answer. And we're going to have her fetch the person to the hoop. Hoop, person, fetch. Ready. There is no hoop in the pool. But there is a person. So Ake Akamai creates a new and intelligent answer. And that is correct. She took the person to the no paddle. There is no hoop. Yes, but there is a person. So, if a dolphin can think about something that isn't present, could it understand something totally abstract, like television? Even a really good show is still just a flat image, a symbol of the real world. Okay. Pay attention. Okay. Roll over. Ready. The dolphins, on the very first occasion that we exposed them to TV, they responded to it just as they would the live world. Yes. Yes, it came. So the TV set is an abstraction. Dolphins, like us, have no problem with that. All other animals that I'm aware of have immense problems with it. One of the interesting things about the dolphins' performance is how they can manipulate their world to make it possible for them to carry out the requests that we give them. For example, we ask them to swim through a hoop that was lying flat on the bottom of the tank. Wait. Pay attention. Hoop through. Ready. The dolphin momentarily looked at the hoop, put her nose under it, picked it up, and then darted through. Very good, yes. Very well done, yes. It was really amazing to okay, see, and uh, we were very, very excited because it demonstrated that she had a concept not just of a, a simple thing like go through a hoop, but she had a concept of throughness. Wait, pay attention. Hoop under, ready. And she's done the same thing, for example, with under. So these are, these are very important aspects of thinking as well, that the dolphin is basically constructing a way to carry out the behavior. Yes, very well. Thinking about a solution, improvising, innovating. Relative to body size, a dolphin's brain is second only to our own. And they have a sense we lack echolocation or sonar. Dolphins use echolocation to find food and navigate by sending out clicks of sound, then listening to the returning echoes. Dr. Herman and Dr. Pack wondered if the dolphins were creating a mental image from the echoes. One, two, three. Hidden from Ilele's sight, an abstract shape is concealed behind black plexiglass. Okay, looks like we're all ready. Okay, Becca, send her over, please. Ready. Ilele now dives down to the black box. 
then uses her echolocation to identify the object, creating, it seems, a mental image. Now comes the test. Can Elele correctly select through vision alone the object she inspected with sound? Swims over to the right. Stays there for three seconds. Very nice. Yes. That's a fantastic job. Good Okay, Becca, send her over, please. Now the researchers put a different abstract shape into the box. Ilele approaches the box and scans the object inside. She says that's the one that's in the box. Very nice. Yes! These experiments show that a dolphin can recognize with vision what it has echolocated with sound. And it seems clear that these dolphins are capable of understanding this simple sign language. But do they talk to each other? When you watch them move together, it's easy to believe they're communicating. Dr. Herman first noticed it when they were asked to do something together. Okay, Adam, Aaron, we're gonna try some tandem creatives, okay? Tandem create, ready. Tandem create means do anything you want, but do it together. One looks back at the other as they seem to decide what to do, but how? Sometimes they whistle and click, sometimes not, but they are clearly working together. Okay, we're set. Here we go. Ready? Let's try creatives. And um, create, come on, let's go out there together. Watch again as they appear to confer just before they leap. This has not been a totally planned out program. We're teaching them, we're trying to teach them, and they are, in fact, trying to teach us. It's only because these animals have been involved in a long-term program of special education in a supportive culture that values education. And that's exactly how humans learn. The full flower of human intellect emerges only in an environment which has a culture which values education and supports it and then all the marvelous things that our intellect allows us to achieve emerge. Why not the same thing for animals? On the far-flung coast of Western Ireland, in the harbor town of Dingle, the art of human conversation is alive and well. Here, everything is fair game for a good Irish story. And it's the language of poetry that's still heard in many a pub. But in Dingle, it's a dolphin that's the talk of the town. Fungi, a lone bottlenose dolphin, suddenly appeared in Dingle Bay and stayed, becoming the Irish dolphin. His presence has created an entire industry dedicated to watching one lonely dolphin. A few people brave the cold waters, hoping fungi will notice them. But most tourists just sign on for the hour or so, happy to catch even a glimpse of the friendly dolphin. He arrived here in November 1983, has virtually transformed the town of Dingle. Estimates put it at over 100, maybe 200,000 people per year come to visit him. Kevin Flannery heads the Department of the Marine in Dingle and monitors the 12 boats officially licensed to take tourists to watch fungi twice a day, all year, in good weather. But this particular Irishman has formed a bond with fungi that is like other friendships described by storytellers as far back as ancient Greece.
The stories tell of solitary dolphins who seek out human company. Maybe they've been rejected from their own society or are victims of circumstance. When Kevin arrives at the entrance of the bay, Fungi shows up for some reason. When Kevin throws his boat into reverse, Fungi comes into play. After years of seeking human company, it seems that Fungi is now most interested in playing with the boat propellers. Fungi's game of choice is to stay inches ahead of the prop blades, crazy as it seems. For Fungi, it must be fun because he seldom misses the wild ride. It's mystifying what he likes about it. But for hours, Fungi will wait and stay close by until he can chase or be chased by Kevin's boat. Whether Fungi is an outcast from his own society, an explorer, or an eccentric is hard to tell, but his attachment to people and to Kevin is obvious. At day's end, the boats head back to harbor, and Fungi knows that he will be left alone. But as the boats go, something remarkable happens. In an amazing display, Fungi explodes from the sea, calling to friends far from his own kind to come back and play with the lonely dolphin. Thousands of miles south, it's a solitary boat that heads out to sea in search of entire societies of dolphins. In the waters off Grand Bahama Island, researchers study dolphins as they are in the wild. Navigating a vast open area, Captain Will Engelby is guided by Dr. Denise Herzing, founder of the Wild Dolphin Project. Her lab is this boat and miles and miles of ocean. This new frontier in dolphin research requires the latest technology, unwavering commitment, and simple seafaring savvy just to find dolphins. The breakthrough has been to discover that spotted dolphins, like people, live in complicated societies. For over 12 years, Denise has observed this group of spotted dolphins who number about 150. In this simple environment, they've developed complex relationships to stay alive. They need each other. And like us, they express that connection with touch. We hold hands, they rub fins. Unspotted babies like KP and Nassau form friendships that will last their entire lives. As adults, they sometimes fish together using echolocation to find fish hidden in the sand. The dolphin's echolocation not only locates fish, but appears to stun them briefly. And if the dolphins aren't interested, the bonita certainly are. The young dolphins have no spots and must actually learn to echolocate, whining and buzzing their way to success. Above the surface, there are different challenges. 
Storms make it impossible to observe dolphins in the calm below the turbulent seas. During bad weather, Denise retreats to her lab and analyzes images and sound recordings to identify individual dolphins and their behavior. Their spots, flukes, and fins are as unique and different as our faces. And by knowing exactly who's who and what they do together, a picture emerges of how they get along. Sometimes, violent conflicts erupt, especially when the larger bottlenose dolphins arrive. Like neighboring tribes of the sea, usually it's peaceful, until one of them crosses too far beyond social boundaries, in this case, the bigger bottlenose. But peace is finally restored. It wasn't scientists who first came to these open waters. Treasure hunters came looking for shipwrecks and found themselves surrounded by curious dolphins. Denise recognized the opportunity, a chance to study a group of dolphins in the wild over many years and on their terms. The truth is that to find dolphins in such a vast expanse of sea all researchers can do is show up and, if they want to, the dolphins will find them. Dolphins! Dolphins on the bow! Woo! And they've come to play. For Denise, it's a family reunion, watching them bow ride, surfing the pressure wave in front of the boat. Dolphins are waiting, and the crew already recognizes Stubby, Rosemole, KP, and Brush. Okay, we're clear if you want to go, they're out this way. The research also includes trying to match the dolphins' behavior with their sounds, eavesdropping on what may be their language. Every dive is an education and an adventure. Here in the Bahamas, as in other parts of the world, people are continuing to study wild dolphins in their environment and on their terms. To be accepted among them is a privilege and opens a window into the lives of beings much like ourselves, intelligent, with language, societies, and even culture. They too live with certain dangers, like close calls with sharks. Dolphins remain the only wild animals who approach us for our own sake, as one intelligent species, curious about the other. For years, man and dolphin have had a certain wonderful connection to each other. Who knows where this joyful interaction may lead. Dolphins seem to exhibit a friendly willingness to cooperate with humans, something very rare in the wild animal kingdom. Nineteen centuries ago, Plutarch, a Greek moralist and biographer, made this statement, to the dolphin alone, beyond all other, nature has granted what the best philosophers seek, 
friendship for no advantage. Dolphins have been credited for saving swimmers from shark attacks, and dolphins are even employed by the U.S. Navy. With their superior underwater sonar detection, they have an unparalleled ability to locate explosives that are buried on the ocean floor. Join us again for another edition of Explore the Wildlife Kingdom as we journey into the kingdom of creation, a place where nature tells its own story and reveals to us wildlife's incredible design. This has been an Exploration Films presentation.